In this video, we're going to cover Fibonacci and trigger line reading, probably one of the most important things that you're going to go through. Um, so you're going to have your three different charts, 14-2 on the left, 8-2 in the middle, and then on the right-hand side, you're going to have your 5-1 chart. And what we've done is we've simplified the chart uh, process, looking at the charts, looking at the triggers. And the idea is that we're going to be looking at uh, fibs and triggers primarily. And you can see we hit Fibonacci support um, with a little divergence down there at the bottom. Traditionally, that is going to stop a trend for you. Uh, it's going to make the market go back up. And it's probably going to go back up to resistance, which it normally will do. Um, again, what I want to do in this video is not necessarily... Um, go through mechanics or go through descriptions. You know, triggers are triggers, fibs are fibs. Reading the fibs and reading the triggers is going to intuitively give you the right trade. One of the things that we do or we talk about in class and we talk about in all of our videos, we talk about strong trigger lines. And I want you to always think, where are my triggers? located relative to the fibs because if the triggers don't break below the blue support then the blue support holds if the triggers don't break above a resistance then the resistance will usually hold and there's a couple exceptions here or there where you can try to get away with some some things but if you notice down here at the bottom fib support held at 3212 and none of the triggers on any of the charts broke below it. Um, so that's an expectation that the market is going to go back up. Now, as the market's going back up, again, sometimes you get a trade, sometimes you don't. Um, so, you know, again, right now we've kind of got a mismatch. And essentially all you have to do is watch the triggers on your middle chart, which is the 8-2 chart. Um, and then you have to watch key areas like yellow one-to-one -one dots on the 14-2 chart, which you can see we just hit. That's one of our termination conditions. Um, hitting a pink mid-band, hitting red fibs, not having the triggers get through it. One of the most common mistakes that a new user will make is they'll look at their small chart on the right side and they'll think, hey, it's time to go long. And you can see we're at that spot right now. This is almost always a loser. And the reason why is because when you start looking at your larger chart, so here, spread it out. You can see the yellow dots at the top, the mid band, and then not one of the small triggers is beyond that area. So because the small triggers aren't above that box, we're not going to go long on the small chart. You will, you lose, and then we'll go back and we'll point it out to you. Um, so again, you can see here um, on the smaller chart, the temptation. And realistically, when you have a large chart area hold, you're looking for the first opportunity on your smaller chart to go short. And I know it seems a little counterintuitive. It's like, don't take the long when it looks like it's going up and then the triggers are going up on the large chart and we're talking about selling resistance on the small chart. Um, and again, trigger mismatch right now. On the large chart, yes, the area is held, but the triggers are up. And on the small chart, you can see things are starting to change. Turn to red and the triggers are crossing to the downside. And again, this is where, you know, you have kind of... Uh, you know, you have areas that held, then you have direction changing on the small chart. And usually that's good enough for a trade for more, you know, our more experienced users who can say, you know, with a high degree of confidence that an area is held. So, you know, you get areas like this at the bottom with a pivot stop out of a divergence line in a green background. And you really have the same thing here. You have an area that held on the big chart and then the small chart shows you the first change. And again, those are the types of extra trades that if you're doing our volume analysis or our market flow and it agrees with those areas, 
you can pick up a couple of extra trades. Um, because if we go all the way back down to the edge of support at the bottom, you know, that's really worth a lot of money. And you can do it with a relatively small stop, but you have to be comfortable reading the big chart and knowing that, you know, again, support holds and then um, resistance holds and then, you know, probably working our way back down into the support Fibonacci blue lines down here. Um, and again, you know, once we reach the blue lines, it's really difficult to go short. Um, you can see the small chart looks like short, 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 and it is. Um, but if our trigger lines haven't broken below support on the 14.2 chart, which you're going to see this theme a lot every day. If the triggers say it's okay, then you can go short again. If the triggers don't say it's okay on the 14.2 chart, it's not okay. And when you blow it up and look at it, you can see it a lot easier. See that right there? Triggers don't say it's okay to go short, so it's not. Now, that can change. You know, we can have things break down and break below. But if they don't, then we put a bottom in. And you don't really want to go short if you put a bottom in <clears throat> because it's a good way to lose your money. And what happens is you can see right here, that's the type of area that the more, you know, uh, experienced users will try to find an opportunity to take a long trade and maybe take it back up to resistance. You know, so you can see, I mean, visually it's not you know, terribly difficult to see that thought process. The market flow volume analysis really, really helps with those types of trades at those very particular areas. Now, you know, what we're going to do in this lesson is really, you know, trend trading. And we talk about trend trading a lot. We talk about fibs and triggers and trend trades and what's high probability. And, you know, look, we hit resistance. And again, this is a little replay from earlier this morning. This was Friday. Um, and again, we had a good day in the classroom Friday, lots of lessons. And, you know, it's one of those things on the small chart, you can see a long trade right here. You can see it on the 5-1 chart. The problem is if you hit resistance on all of your other charts, you end up losing that trade or it has very limited potential. Maybe, you know, it gets back up towards the high, but that's about it. Not until we break above resistance are we going to really have an opportunity to take a high probability trade. And again, you get these trades where it's like, well, if I would have done this or I could have done that, and you talk yourself into taking a lot of losers that you shouldn't. One of the more uh, difficult things in day trading is waiting. To just wait until everything lines up and everything's really easy. And, you know, again, I want you to think about your objectives. You know, if you're trying to make four or $500 in a day, you know, even two or three hundred dollars on one contract in a day is a lot. Think about it. Three hundred a day pays for the software for a month. So these are the types of areas that we're going to focus on at the edges with fibs. And if the triggers, you know, again, we're kind of in a little early morning range here, which you can see, but. When the triggers don't break resistance or support, then, you know, there's just nothing to do. Now, it can all change. And, you know, I'm not saying that there's not some additional opportunities where the small chart, the 5-1 chart is really, really strong and people take a little more opportunity. Um, but you can see, look, right here. Look at your small triggers. Where are they? If they're physically above the blue lines, then we're not really going to be going short. Even though the market's going down, you know, we're going to essentially we stop and drop and do the same thing over and over and over. If you hit blue fibs, we watch the triggers. And, you know, if both of the small triggers don't get below this area, they could very quickly turn around. Now, if they get below it, which you can see we're doing now, see that? So we're starting to get below and look, here's your small chart. So now look, 
the small chart agrees with the large chart right here. So this is all we're looking for. Look, let me slow this down here. This is all we're looking for, guys. Everything on all the charts agrees. There's nothing in the way. These are the types of areas where we'll sell a pullback and we're looking to get in at resist, you know, Fibonacci sell resistance when everything is going down. <laughs> didn't get me. You can see we didn't hit resistance. Um, and again, this is one of those, you know, if they don't hit resistance, sometimes for us it's very difficult and we can miss a trade if we don't get a pullback. Usually if you get two divergences, see on the small chart, usually they'll come back and they'll get the area. So again, sometimes you have to wait and if you try to go too early, then you end up getting, uh, you know, realistically the yellow dots and the, and the red line right there. I mean, that's really the best spot right there. Um, and you can see we hit it. And look, all we're trying to do is get to support. Oh, that was quick. That's it. Everything was going down strong. We sold a pullback to resistance. We get out at support. And it might go further, but it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? So look, this look right here, get it in your head. This is the look. Everything's going down strong. You broke support. The triggers are going down strong, which the same triggers on both the 14.2 and 8.2 chart. Getting out at resistance, could add a little more there, but whatever, that's okay. Very easy trades, very visually easy trades. Look at the 8-2 chart in the middle. The 8-2 chart and the 14-2 chart have the same triggers. Um, and then when you get down to support with blue uh, fibs and a green background on the small chart, party's over, take your money. And you don't have to guess. Right? We get fibs. How many triggers are below the last fib? Zero. So we get one short down to support and that's it. And I mean, that's basically about as easy as it can get. Now, you know, is there long trades there? I mean, not for you, right? In the beginning, that's not what we're looking to do. We're looking to only trade, you know, and again, it's not that you can't trade off of the tops or bottoms, but against the trend, it's very difficult. Um, so, you know, we get these areas like this right here where we have uh, resistance. Just look at the 8-2 chart in the middle. Prior divergence, resistance. The triggers are really far away on the 8-2 chart in the middle. That's the type of look that can make the market go back down again pretty darn easily. And it's difficult to see if you're looking at your 8 2 or your 5 1 chart because your 5 1 chart's green, telling you, you know, hey, we might go up. But when you look at your larger charts, which is where you're supposed to really keep your focus before you start doing trades, and I'm not saying we won't go up here, we could, right? I mean, we could, but it's not a trade. Because we don't trade into resistance. We don't trade into resistance and mid bands on the big charts, especially if what? The triggers aren't past it. So if it goes up here, it goes up without us, and it's just not our money. And that's okay. Because most of the time, you're going to look up, and you'll take a loser, and you'll be like, why did I lose? And when you go back and you look at the A2 chart now, you're like, oh, man, I see why I lost. So really pay attention to the 8-2 chart resistance, support and resistance. Really pay attention to those trigger lines. If you hit support, stop going short. If you hit resistance, don't go long. And I'm not saying it won't go up. It's just not our trade. And you can see how really tough it's struggling here. You don't have to catch every move to make money. And again, this is why I think, um, you know, again, look, this is a really, here's a good example. Look at this. This is solid fibs right there, right? Red lines, mid bands, 
I mean, that's really what we're looking for as far as uh, resistance goes. Now, triggers are up, so one of two things. They either have to roll down or we have to break out of resistance. I don't know which one's going to happen. You don't know which one's going to happen. It doesn't matter. We don't have to know. The only thing we have to do is say, where are the small triggers relative to the red line? If the small triggers are below the last red line, then we're not going long, even if it goes up. And you can see, you know, you have a little bit of support here and the triggers are up. And, you know, again, on the small chart, you may say, yeah, it might go long. And then you look up later and you're like, oh, why did I lose? And you'll see almost every losing trend trade that you do will have an area that you traded into and the triggers didn't agree with it. And again, when I do these videos, you know, sometimes I'll do a bad trade and show you a bad trade. I'm going to try not to, if at all possible. <laughs> so we're going to try to do it this way. Um, you know, we're going to try to keep it really conservative and just really show you the opportunities. So look, this is your 8-2 chart, which I think is a fantastic thing now that we've got the 14-2 triggers on there. We want to have triggers above the FIP. So you see it? I drew a box. And look at your small triggers. Those are the same triggers as the 14-2 triggers. If they're not above that area, then there won't be a long trade. See that? So we're right at it right now. I mean, this is literally how exact the science is. I mean, it's the triggers are at it. They're not above it. So when both of those little lines get above it, we can keep going long. Since the trend is up, I mean, you know, the triggers are up. We could potentially keep going. Um, but instead of potentially keep going, we want to know that we have a high probability to keep going. So this is where you're watching your chart and you just wait. See how the triggers are not above the area. Now we do have support and the triggers are up. So there's, you know, again, it's a chance that we might go, but look at what you'd be trading into just for a visual on the small chart. Some people will try to take a trade to get to the last area, which I'm not against. Um, again, that's a little bit more, uh, you know, you can see how there's an opportunity maybe to get to that edge. Some traders will trade up to the edge and then they'll stop. So maybe, you know, you could have one in there, but it's a visually difficult trade for new people. So, you know, I'm going to stress that you do not have to have them all in order to make money. You need to have the good ones, the right ones. So, see how we've done this? Pretty straightforward, right? I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Just, we get above that area. Triggers get above it. And you can see they're starting. There we go. See that? Now there's no doubt. See how they're above? So now we're on our toes. And we're like, okay, good. Let's do a trade. And, you know, now you have to kind of say to yourself, okay, where's my trade going to be? Right? Because it's not a perfect everything kind of coming together look, is it? You know, we've already set up. So what, when you're setting a trade, I want you to think about how is it going to look on the 14-2 chart? Because... Almost every time you go back after a trade setup, you should be able to go back to your 14-2 chart and it should look perfect. And again, look, we've got some, you know, there's a lot of divergences and little things happening on the small chart. And again, those are the kinds of things that scare a new user out. But look, I want you to see from a big picture. See this? That is justifiable to the downside when everything is going down really strong at resistance to support. And then it's not that there weren't maybe a couple of trades that some of the more advanced traders might have had to get to the edge, but don't worry about it. 
Once the triggers got above, look at this. That's the look right there. Small triggers way up above the strong triggers with support. Right? So, and again, as we go forward, you know, again, I don't want to belabor it too long, but you can see. Up to resistance, no trouble. Then you have to start your, you know, again, support to resistance. Then you start the process over again. And again, I didn't want to belabor it too long. I mean, this is already going to be kind of a long video anyway, because when you're talking through fibs and triggers, which, again, that's kind of what we do when we're, uh, you know, in class and the things that we're going through. And when you're doing your own work, you're going to be doing the same talking to yourself in your head. Okay, I'm at resistance on the 14.2 chart. What do the triggers say? What does the area on the small chart say? The small chart area is resistance. Well, we can get out at resistance, but we surely can't go long at resistance, right? So what needs to happen to resistance to go long? Well, there you go. That answers the question, doesn't it? <laughs> What has to happen to resistance to go long again? Because sometimes it just keeps on going and going and going. So, and we did this lesson on Friday, and it was a very, very good lesson where we talked about strong triggers where that first trade was and not really worrying too much about anything going wrong because the triggers were so strong. And, you know, again, when you're looking at buying a breakout, um, two things um, again when the small triggers are inside of the large triggers that's what we call weaker or inside right and we always say and you've seen it in the videos anything can happen well anything means read your indicators so right now the support indicators the blue Fibonacci support is the anything that's probably going to happen so the anything can happen is probably going to be going up when now management also can change when the triggers are inside of each other um, because this is where potentially we have you know a pivot stop out or two divergences and it kind of ends the trend if it keeps going it's going to be really easy if it doesn't keep going then we're going to end up having a you know two divergences and then it's going to be stopped out so again if we make that second divergence which again I'll spread this out a little bit so because the triggers on the 8-2 chart on the inside this second divergence right here is going to terminate the trend does that make sense if it keeps going, we get to resistance. If it goes down, it terminates the trend. All right, so, you know, again, I, I wanted to take the time to kind of walk you through this. And, you know, this video is going to go a little bit longer because, you know, we're only at 630 in the morning. I'm trying to go a little bit quicker, but I want to really take the time. And, you know, usually if you get back below that divergence line a second time, it's over and you could kind of lock in a little more money, but I'll force it to at least make it down more. See what I'm saying right here? Usually once it goes above it a second time, it doesn't come back down again, but I'm going to force it to at least make a down bar. If it has a second divergence working, especially a bigger number divergence, and you make that down bar, I mean, chances are it's going to go back down again. So, you know, again, some people will just say, hey, give me my $200, right? And that is half of your daily goal right there. So some people say take it, some people hold for the FIB, and then some people will get out on a reversal. If we get the reversal with the weak triggers, it's going down. There it is. And usually it, with weak triggers after two divergences, so look, here's what you end up with. Label it up for you a little bit. So, you know, you end up with weak triggers, two divergences, and 
you know, in a strong trending up, we have to think we could still go up. Because we're looking at support and we're looking at mid bands. So we kind of get this thought, maybe we still go up, right? And even though the triggers have rolled down, they're still way above support, which is really bad for going short. And this is where people have a bad time on their smaller charts because, you know, the more experienced trader thinks that. That we're going to go back up, retest the triggers, and, you know, and the newer users will see short trade right here. And the problem is, you know, if the large chart can still go up, this short trade, while it works sometimes, notice how far away the uh, larger triggers are there. Usually this one just kind of, it just doesn't work. I don't know what to say, except if the large chart says it could still go up, the small chart loses, and you got to get used to that um, you know, not staring at your small chart the whole time. Because if you do, you're going to miss, you know, the obviousness of it. Um, and again, we kind of, you can see, so I'm speeding this up so we don't have to talk for three hours. We did go back up, but we failed. So, you know, again, the mid band caused a bounce like it normally does, which is very, very typical. And... You know, this is where people will get into trouble. Right. Let me clean this up here. See how we're uh, trigger mismatch kind of between the two charts. So the large chart was still kind of up. And then now the large charts kind of down. And now the small charts going down too. And what happens is right here, people will start thinking on the small chart. Let me go long. And if you go long, you're going to lose. And the reason you're going to lose is because the triggers on the large chart don't agree with a long trade right there. See how the smalls are below and it's red? So again, you can talk yourself into doing lots of trades that don't have both charts with both sets of triggers in the same direction saying the same thing. And when you get this mismatch, that's where you get tricked into doing the wrong thing most of the time. So the operative key thing for you is to make sure that both charts have the same color background, both triggers are strong, both charts, all three charts agree. I mean, the 8.2 and the 14.2 have the same triggers on them, so they're going to always have the same triggers. But it's easier to see just the 8, 2, and the 5, 1. So look, what do you see now? Everything agrees. All charts have all triggers going down. So if we've got a trade, that's a trade. You see it? How obvious it is? Both charts, all triggers going down. Well, that's not going to give us a trade, but you get the idea, right? <laughs> So it's pretty easy to see. You don't always get, you know, you don't always get paid for seeing it. But the more important thing is don't get involved with mismatched triggers. When you have the 8-2 chart red or the triggers going down, make sure that the 5-1 chart triggers say the same thing. If they both say the same thing at the same time and all of them have resistance, you usually end up with the right trade. So look, strong triggers down, short, strong triggers up, strong triggers up. And now we're at, again, I don't mean to jump around too much, but this is kind of how the day goes. Now we're at support on the little chart and we want to basically break through everything. Let me speed it up here. And again, we break fibs, so fibs are not absolute going to hold all the time. Sometimes when it's really strong into it, this is a pretty good look. You know, we ask ourselves, you know, did we break both triggers below the fibs? And one of the most detrimental mistakes that people make, they make it every day. Um, and I have to say the same thing every day. If the fibs hold and the triggers didn't break, don't go short. Watch, let me show this to you. Because this is exactly what happened on a Friday. This was Friday's. 
And when you walk through it yourself, look, right here is where people will try to go short. And retrospectively, when you go back and you look at it, you're going to have to ask yourself a question. If the edge of fibs holds and none of the triggers break, look, this is an example of somebody who posted a picture. And this is what we do in class with you guys. They went short after the edge of fibs held. And then they lost. And rule number two is make sure you haven't hit something, right? that is going to stop the trend and what happened if you do it anyway because you talk yourself into it because of the small chart you end up losing and it's you know again it's a loss that you shouldn't really take and this is why we have you guys post pictures in the classroom so that way we can see if you make you know again it's obvious when somebody points it out to you right in the heat of battle you're like oh i'm trying to go short because all the triggers are going down when in actuality you hit the edge of support and you have divergence on your small chart and you don't actually get a winning trade, you get a loser. And, you know, again, sometimes when the edges of fibs hold, some of our more assertive traders will try to find an opportunity. And, you know, they'll try to take advantage of knowing that the bottom held and they'll look for some type of market flow signal or some type of reason again not really as good looking now is it at eight o'clock the fibs updated so we're coming off a of resistance now <laughs> so again every you know every so often the fibs will update and then you'll uh, have new resistance so now we've got we've got a mismatch we've got support on the 14 two chart holding and the smaller charts we also have resistance at 32 15 50 that could hold too so we got to wait for everything to line up and everything to really um, say it's okay so see how we had the edge of fibs hold and on your 14 2 chart we've got this resistance um, Sometimes when the triggers really get going off of the bottom on the 14-2 chart, you know, you get a pivot stop out, you get a trend trade, you get an opportunity to try to catch, you know, the first little reversal. Um, and again, there's only a couple of trades that we really teach you, right? Trend trades or, you know, double bottom pivot stop out type trades. And, you know... Usually, if you have to look really hard for a trade, um, you're not really going to get one. And you can see that the gap between our, on the 5-1 chart, the gap between our 5-1 big triggers here, you know, the down at 32.12. And again, this is, you know, the 50-50 zone. See where, um, not even 50-50. See how the small triggers are not passing that 32-16 on the big chart? And this is where people talk themselves into doing trades. And again, I told you I wasn't going to do any that weren't 100% perfect. Maybe I'll do one just to show you. I'd like to at least see it get closer to the large triggers. Right, we got a pivot stop out low. All right, a lot of people will try this. They'll try the pivot stop out trade. And again, I'm not against this because a lot of times it really, really works and it works really well. Um, usually, you know, again, we like to, you know, be able to get in and have your stop below the large triggers on your 8-2 chart. Again, look at your large chart. <sighs> Uh, the triggers aren't quite past it. We had divergence on the high, so we're going to stop out the pivot low, traditionally, right? So again, since the triggers are creeping closer, this is where, if it wins, it works really well. Um, and we'll go back, and if it wins, we go up to resistance, which is awesome. And it lost. Okay, so there you go. Anyway, we'll go back and we'll look at these later. But a pivot stop out, it's a good attempt when the bottom holds. 
you know, but it's still not perfect, but it's perfectly adequate. As long as you're consistent with that look coming off of the top or bottom, usually you catch, you know, 60% winners or so, and sometimes you have to lose, right? All right, let's see what happens. They're making a run at support. What do we want to see happen with support? Only one of two things happens. The triggers get past it and we'll go short, or the triggers stay above it and we'll look for a turnaround. Speeding it up a little bit. All right. Question answered. Let me stop this for a second here. Look. Undeniable 100%. You can't possibly mess this up at all 100%. And eh, this is a little bit low. I'll have to put a bigger stop in. But you can see that between 09 and 1050, I mean 1050 is probably a better entry, but I'll, I'll just put a bigger stop. Look, undeniable. Strong down. You see the same triggers on your 8-2 chart. We haven't run into any support. We got support a long way off. Ideal. There's just more support lower, but... That's the first support. So, again, look, I got to risk a little extra here just since we got a bad fill. See that 10, 3210, probably best fill, give or take. Now, I got this going a little bit quicker, but again, I'm more worried about the fib and trigger line reading than I am the trading. Um, you know, the trading comes easy when you get the trigger line reading right. So, and I think this is really highlighted very well on the on the 5.1 and the 8.2 chart. Look at how convincing the Fibonacci resistance and triggers are on the 8.2 chart. I mean, look, we hit the target so easy. <laughs> look at your 14.2 chart. We're probably going to keep going. Uh, anyway, let's look at it. The edge of Fib's hold. We did that loser. All right. Watch. Strong triggers down, we went short, down to the fibs. Strong triggers up, we went long, up to the fibs. Strong triggers up, managed when it was weak. Eh, tried one, triggers weren't really passed, see what happens. Anyway, it was an attempt, no big deal. Strong triggers down, look how easy that is. And again, we probably left some meat on the bone on that one, probably some more profit potential, but... You get the idea, right? Strong triggers on the big charts. Buy or sell a pullback. Take it to resistance. From, from resistance to support, support to resistance. If the triggers are weak, manage your position. All right. Again, look, I could have got a better fill, but a little extra stop. No big deal. All right. Eh, could have made a little more, huh? <laughs> All right. And look where we're at, guys. Triggers are weak. We got the edge of fibs. See how the smalls are inside of the, the large here? Really easy to see on the 8-2. So the edges of fibs hold. Ooh, jumped off of there quick, didn't it? All right. The edges of fibs hold, and remember the trade we did last time? A little pivot swap out. You know, this almost looks identical to what we had earlier, doesn't it? Let's see if we can get back to our 8-2 larger triggers a little bit. Uh, there's diversion here. Same trade we did last time. Right? Edge of fibs hold. We got divergence. We're going to do a little pivot stop out. We lost the last one, so. Again, see how quickly they rocketed off of the bottom? Not just fibs, but lots of fibs at 31.95. Lots of solid fibs. None of the triggers got passed, plus the triggers were weak. Um, and again, this is kind of, you know, it's not a hundred percenter because same reason as last time um, but this trade happens a lot so and oh, sorry about that um, 
my thing got stuck. All right, so we got into it, and we had divergence, and again, this is the same thing we did last time, and you know, do we hang on indefinitely on this type of trade or not? And you know, we're in, and there's another trend trade, and you know, now we've got a second divergence working. And we have to just ask ourselves, if we get a second divergence, do we want to stay in? Do we want to risk a little more? Do we not? Um, and again, looking at your large charts, you can see how obvious that it is that we're going up. Here, I'll get out with the second divergence. Just be conservative. When you look at your larger chart, again, you should see nothing but strong triggers and fibs, right? And yeah, maybe we get a pivot stop out over here. Yeah. You know, you see where we get a little pivot stop out on the big chart? Kind of the same thing we did on the little chart. May not even make it, but you see, look, when you read these triggers and the blue fibs, what do you see? We're going up. I mean, it's pretty much guaranteed. May not get that fill. Uh, all right. Anyway, no big deal. And again, some people will go right here and be a little more assertive with it now that the fib held. Again, I won't do any assertive trades since it's a red background. Try not to do any assertive trades with you guys. It's hard because I can see, you know, pretty easily that they just stopped out the low and they're going up. And they're going up to resistance. It's look at the 8-2 chart. You can almost guarantee it looking at those triggers. Anyway, that's the whole idea, I guess, behind reading your fibs and triggers, isn't it? To feel so comfortable that the trigger lines are doing a really strong move and that you've got the support behind you and that exit just looks horrible, doesn't it? <laughs> the short looked good. We made some money and... You know, again, look from the 8-2 chart perspective. Still, good trigger from the edge of fibs. I'll defend it. Didn't work. Same trade now. I maybe could have waited a little, a little more. I would have got paid. See that? Trigger said it was going to go, and it did. Had to risk a little bit more than they needed to, but hopefully this is clear to you. When the triggers are strong, look for the areas. When it gets to resistance, stop. Right I'm not really proud of that management right there, but when you back out of it and you look at it, you're like, wow, did I do the best I could have done? And it's like, no, not even close. Hopefully it's as obvious to you as it is. You know, if it's not now, it will be. The confusion comes more when people look at their little charts. And they're like, oh, man, the little chart's up, down, up, down, up, down, and divergence and lines, and what should I do? And if it doesn't line up perfectly with all the big charts, don't worry about it. So now look, there's no confusion, is there? All the charts are up. Look at your 14-2 chart. Small chart's up, right? I mean, maybe it's not the best fill, but I uh, have to risk a little more, maybe. But again, they're all up. Undeniable. I had to move my stop out of the way because I didn't get the best fill there. I got to pivot. <clears throat> so, you know, again, when you go back and look at things after the fact, um, you know, again, when you see it live, and I see it live, of course, I've done it for so long, it's second nature. You're going to have to have that same second nature feeling. Um, when to ignore the little blips on the small chart and really pay attention to your big chart. When the triggers are outside on the big chart, you're going to go back and you're going to see you're going to have more winners than losers. Um, you know, knock on wood, hopefully, right? There's no guarantees, but so far for an awful long period of time, fibs with strong triggers have worked out quite well. And you can see, look, when you look at it on the big chart, it looks pretty simple, doesn't it? Trigger's going up, buy a pullback, put my stop where it wasn't supposed to go. I could have maybe got a little better fill or, you know, some people will add on at the lower level. But 
you get the idea, right? Strong triggers, <clears throat> bipolar, excuse me. But look, what does it mean? What have we done so far? 2900 bucks, or two lot. That's not so bad with one loser. And we haven't done anything tricky. The only thing we've done is wait for both charts, all the triggers to line up, and we bought or sold a pullback. That's it. One time we managed out because the triggers were weak and we had two divergences. The second time I didn't have weak triggers, I probably shouldn't have managed out with two divergences, but that's okay. I'll, I'll practice, try to get better later. <laughs> right? Now we hit resistance. What do you see? 14.2 triggers are weak. And we hit resistance. So, party's over. Just that simple. And, all right. Well, they were adamant about it up there, weren't they? Hang on. Let's look at everything. Slide it all together. You can answer the question here quite easily, can't you? All the triggers are going down, yes. Everything's red, yes. Should I sell a pullback? Yes. Where could it go, right? First level, second level, right? Give yourself kind of a window. Because you have to have your stop way past the window. You can't put your stop at the top of the window. That's why we have you guys draw this box. Where could it go when you have to have your stop past where could it go? Does that make sense when you're looking at it? Hope, hopefully so. So some, <clears throat> some people will add on. You know, they'll get in half and then they'll get in a little more later if it goes to the edge. A little better fill, kind of average themselves in. Let's see if we get that here. Is the trade obvious? Strong triggers, red resistances, cross the board. Well, there you go. Didn't even go up to the edge. There you go. That's the trade. Got it? Super easy. Just wait for the triggers to all agree. Buy or sell the pullback and hope for the best. Welcome to day trading. <laughs> it really is that easy. Now, it doesn't always trend all the time. You know, some days you're going to... You know, you're going to have those days where you're going to run into a lot of areas and you're not going to be able to get the easier trades. Um, now, as you gain experience, remember what we said? As you gain more experience and you're really getting good at recognizing when the market's going to stop, then some of those, you know, slightly more assertive trades on the smaller charts are going to fill in the gap for you on the non-trending days. You need to know when and where the market's going to stop by reading your fibs and triggers. Once you've done that, then you can, you know, again, when it breaks out, you get your trade. When it breaks out, you get your trade. It's really easy. When it doesn't break out, you have to stop. So if you hit a fib with divergence exactly, look, top and bottom here, stop. That's it. Just stop. And if it breaks, we keep going. And if it doesn't, we don't. Don't even have to guess. Let's review it. Because I don't think you can say it enough. I say it a million times a week. Strong triggers down. Find your short trade. Sell. Resistance. Out at support. Give or take. Strong triggers up. Buy a pullback. Right? Strong triggers past the fibs, buy a pullback to support, out at resistance. Again, it's easy to see after the fact, but it's hopefully it's not too difficult to see while it's happening. Right? This is where practice and execution now look a little different. We bought support, but the triggers were weak. Remember? Small triggers inside. So we had to manage that trade a little differently because sometimes they don't follow through. Mismatch of triggers. We didn't do anything. Hit support. And we try to break out trade, which, you know, again, coming off of a major bottom, I'm going to defend it. But you can kind of see retrospectively our triggers weren't really past that. Right. So 
we took a loser no big deal because of the bottom we said hey we're gonna try it and again it's about consistency and when you're gonna take those chances now the market apologized to us easy break of SPIP support easy pull back to resistance easy down to support and could have had more but it doesn't matter right now same thing in reverse edge of fibs holds right weak triggers really good and we took a long trade and eh, the management doesn't look so pretty there does it <laughs> could have hung on for that one anyway i'm moving on triggers break the fibs no doubt about it we get another long up towards resistance see how the triggers are outside up towards resistance and then look weak triggers small triggers inside and it goes down and then last one that we did was strong triggers down pull back down to support pretty much same thing over and over when we say reading your fibs and triggers it's getting used to the idea of you know if support holds with divergence on the small chart what does it mean can you go short again do you have to stop right because this is the hard part because it's like well the big charts still down but why is it going up so divergence exactly from a fib on the small chart really is a very powerful thing and you'll see it reverse the market quite a bit and now we put ourselves up into the same position that we were in last time look the edge of fibs Again, I think this is really easy to see on the 8-2 chart. Again, you have to have a combination of both 8-2 and 5-1, but the triggers are up strong, or going strong, but we have this resistance that's causing us angst, right? Is it going to break? And is there other trades you can take in addition to super conservative ones? Sure there is, of course. Right? Now, look. Can you see it? We don't have to guess anymore. It says it's going up. I mean, maybe could have had one long trade there at 08, but <laughs> you can see, I mean, now it's super definitive we're going up. So if you get a pullback, great, we'll take a trade. See it? And again, it's kind of, you know, kind of hard to not believe that that 08 was going up right there, but yeah, I missed that one. That's okay. Again, you could see where you could make a case for buying 3208, where we hit support and the triggers and everything was up strong. Anyway, that's one of the ones that you'll get maybe if, uh, you know, you've got a little bit more experience. Now, Look, fib and trigger line reading again. You get back to a prior divergence high. So that's what makes this long magenta line. That is a troublemaker for the trend. You treat that almost the same way you treat a fib. If the triggers aren't past it, then it won't break. And this is where people are going to go long on the small chart because it's strong, which, you know, again, if you do go long, which, again, I'm not totally against it, but this is where they fail with divergence. See that divergence right there? Hey, just you get forced out of a trade because it's not quite right because you ran into something and... You know, I'm not against doing it, but then being protective of your money. Because if price is below your triggers and you get divergence, we're going down. And sometimes it's hard to see in the beginning because you're like, well, it's all green. But the location of your price below your triggers. And again, look, I want you to see this because when you come off of a major area, top to bottom. Remember we talked about this one? We talked about, you know, again, this is a little more of a stretch than, but if you have a termination condition, edge of fibs or something really strong, then these are the ones where you get extra money. 
And sometimes you lose them, of course, but, you know, if the top is really good or the bottom is really good, then sometimes you get these extra little trades where you're like, man, I can take, you know, four or five points extra. And we've already seen, what, three or four examples of this probably today. And you don't win them all, but usually if you lose it, it does give you, you know, a trade going the other way pretty easily. <clears throat> we'll do some risk here. And again, this is only to be done if you've got a major top or bottom. And the entry is not very difficult, is it? Red background, fibs, and triggers. I mean, it's not like we have to make up anything new. Right? Red background, fibs, and triggers. And you know, again, you take four or five points. Let's see, you get out there. See that? And again, you're not going for a home run because the large chart isn't with you. But, you know, again, you start adding to the bottom line. I mean, look, that's four grand on two contracts. That's not a bad day. Two grand a contract. When you're trying to only make 400 bucks, I mean, you can really start to see, wow, there's a lot more potential than $400 a day. You know, that one maybe. Again, this one's obvious, right? And you start going back and you start seeing some of the obvious with the chart, large chart trades, you know, and again, this one was maybe not my best management of my life, but short with everything going down, ultra obvious, hopefully could have got a little better fill there, but that's okay. And then we lost the one, right? Remember that one? Again, sometimes you win those and sometimes you lose. That's, you know, that's okay. You gotta take a loser once in a while or they start looking at you funny. And then when it's really strong, I mean, obviously easily going up and then one more and then it was weak. Remember what we did? Two divergences we got out. Really just repeat the same thing over and over. Everything was strong. Sold resistance out at support. Same thing pretty much over and over. And again, there's a couple extras. Look this morning. I mean, you could see the extras, right? <laughs> when the top holds or the bottom holds in a range. Yeah. So look, this is up to about 1140 in the morning. And, you know, again, what we want you to do is study the videos on the education page do market replay um, study the class sign up for a demo of the indicators right um, 10 day demo then we'll roll into a monthly lease and again from the website you know we want you to study and it's just seeing the same thing over and over and over again um, you know, this was, uh, you know, a really good morning, obviously, number one. But as we got into um, here, let's go a little bit later here. Same thing over. Look, this was a little bit after the 1140. We broke that support. I just want you to see the overwhelming obviousness of the short. So this is before the entry. You know, again, this is just right after 12 o'clock in the class. And look, if people quit trading at 12, the market doesn't stop. And, you know, again, I want you to be able to look at your indicators. So look, let me do this because this is an obvious one. See how I had to move my stop a little bit? I think it's a little more obvious when you look at this chart. I needed to move my stop because it could literally go up to that second red line in the top of the triggers. You see that? So again, it should make sense on this chart with your 8-2 chart with the 14-2 triggers. If it doesn't make sense because of the area or the triggers, then you just don't get a trade. So notice I put my stop where the market should not go. And I want you to also, you know, again, people look at the small chart and they get scared out of their trades sometimes. 
I want you to look at the small triggers versus the large triggers here. And, you know, we talk about this little edge or pivot stop out trade a lot, you know, where we have a prior divergence and a little pivot stop out. I don't mind if you do that trade, but it has to be with the big chart, not against it, if that makes sense. I don't want you doing pivot stop out counter trends against the triggers. I want you to do pivot stop out trades when you have a little divergence and you're going to get a pivot stop out. See, look, there we got a fill. See that? That prior little magenta line right there, but it's with the trend and it's super strong triggers and it's overwhelmingly deniable. So we call it an edge trade, but it's really technically a trend trade on the big chart. And I, I really wanted to kind of give you guys this, um, you know, because this happened right after the room on, on Friday. And, you know, I had posted this trade in, and I think a lot of people hadn't seen the trade. And, you know, again, when you look at it, it should make sense, right? Triggers are down, resistance all across the board, nice and easy. And... You know, this is where, remember when we were looking at our uh, charts earlier, we're like, man, it was so strong, we could have maybe made a bunch more money. And some people will, you know, they'll take the first profit target and then they'll let a bigger one run. In the beginning, I'd prefer you guys just get in at an area and out at an area. Because you're not going to have multiple contracts and you're not going to be horsing around trying to catch every tick, right? You need to make money, make money, make money, make money. So, again, while this still took quite a bit of time here, hopefully it's a pretty easy educational video. Um, here, let me show you guys. So, again, look at the 14.2 chart. Triggers are the same on the 14.2 and the 8.2, so it should be obvious. On the small chart, this is where people get scared out, right? They say, oh, there's some lines, and oh, there's a divergence, and oh, there's this and that, and they lose sight of the big picture. And again, this is what we would deem an edge trade or pivot stop out at the edge. You'll hear us say both of those a lot. But it has to be with the trend, with the big chart, with the big triggers, from the edges of the areas, or else it just doesn't make sense. And look. I'd prefer for all new users be out right here. Just be done. Because what happens is you start thinking about, well, should I hang in there forever? And, you know, you're already up a daily goal with this right here. I mean, look, 300 and almost 350 bucks a contract. Just take the money. And again, what happens is you start thinking, well, I'm going to get greedy and I'm going to hang on. And, and invariably, when you don't take the money, they're going to come back and get you. It just happens. You're going to be like, oh, man, they're going to get me. Let me move my stop backwards so I don't get bumped. And you're going to say, I'm going to try to leave it behind the pivot. And then you're going to miss the divergence. And you're going to have a pivot stop out that's going to stop you out on the high. And then you're going to be like, oh, man, they got me. And then you're not going to have a way like, you know, a stop order below the one to one to get back in again. You're going to not have a way to get back in or a market flow. And you're going to miss the rest of your money after getting stopped out on the high. <laughs> and you're going to look back and say, I should have, could have, would have. You know, we don't want you doing that. Take the money at the FIB the first time and then you can sell the one-to-one -one the second time. You're not in a position trying to do battle. You've, you've got your brain free and clear. You're in the money, out of the, you know, in the position, out of the position. Then you can take a new one and you don't have to battle quite as much. So, just some food for thought. Simplicity, guys. Make sure. And again, I don't mean to beat this up too terribly bad, but again, it's the same thing over and over. Look, here's where we ended up $5,700 on those trades. And I don't think we did anything tricky, did we? I mean, that's a lot of money on a, you know, I mean, there was one where we had an extra contract, but, you know, you make a thousand or two thousand dollars a day on a contract. It's, you know, that's not bad for, I mean, granted, we were here at three o'clock in the morning, three thirty in the morning, 
So that's eight hours worth of work. But, you know, again, that's a lot of money for eight hours. Strong triggers, weak triggers. Strong triggers you trade, weak triggers you manage. Stop at the fibs. Wait for the triggers to break below and be strong. Get out at the fibs, even if it keeps going. If the fibs hold, you can maybe take an attempt. Manage a little better than I did. If it breaks fibs, you can take another attempt. If the triggers are weak, get out at the fibs. If they're strong, get out at the fibs. In at the fibs, out at the fibs. And repeat the same thing. <laughs> if the top holds, you can take one attempt. You know, again, those are the extras that we were talking about. And then afterwards, super strong trend, and you get a pretty easy trend trade short. Again, just do the same thing over and over and over. And don't try to make a trade happen. Make sure it's obvious on all of your charts. Hopefully this little lesson will help you out. Again, it's a video to reinforce everything that's on the education page. Nothing, no new concepts, just indicators, trend trades, management. Go to the education class, post pictures in the room. If you haven't done so, sign up for a demo and we'll look forward to seeing you in the class.